Shalom, shalom. Okay. So more low quality, low effort videos. Part number five thousand. I have a. I think I have that many videos on this channel, and so little viewers. Not many subscribers. Now some videos make lots of views. Anyway, I gave up on the Call of the Beast. Because, screw that one, when on the 9th we have this amazing story. And why am I doing this only for the 9th? Mm -hmm. Who knows? I'm a late bloomer and quite frankly the coronavirus has been, coronavirus has been really a torn in my side lately. So, we'll see what we can do. The Yambic Chrome One made its final maneuvers towards the station. In comparison to the majestic cocktooth spirals that made up the lonely space station superstructure, the forge bark wallows silently like an ungainly void whale. Every tooth like projection, some as large as the Chromulam itself. <laughs> Do you think I can just call this the Romulan? And serving as a docking pyres was lined with smaller protrusions, and these in turn were lined with more on and on in a dizzily frantical design. Viewed from an axis, the station was like was snowflake like with its six protruding primary piers. Error Muse Logicus Dunal Roverin as she worked the Filacker Terminal <clears throat> Oh wait. The Falakor Terminus is like a component of the Omnissiah Celestial Engine. Nothing like the station existed anywhere else in Metallica's stellar system. Nice, Metallica has an, its own system. Nice. For its heritage spoke undeniably of Mars. Upon first encountering it, Duno had opinionate, opinated, opined, opined. Opined, it was a triumphal example of the 32nd millennium re expansion. Tricking Jordis, Dunal's overseer and fellow tech priest, tartly, tartly responded that it was a yoke of Martian hegemony, best left out here in the Forge World system's further reaches. The Romulan settled half a mile away from the nearest docking pier spur on the dark side of the Phylacher Terminus. Its hard edges barely lit by the Romulan's running light, the station's outline was discernible against the backdrop of stars. Above one outcrop of its architectural, of its actual, yeah, architecture, Metallica's star could be glimpsed at half a light year away. To biological eyes, it was indistinguishably distinguishable from the vastly more distant stars around it. Duna's gunmetal optics span and click in the metal of her face, as part of her mind ran orbital auguries on the star. She stood at the ship's dark and cramped bridge station, the majority of her focus coordinating the Yambic Romulan's extraordinary um umbilical cord, I guess. Dozen of feet in diameter diameter. Whatever. The mechanical appendage slowly stretched its way across the gap between the forge baroque and the station. Enormous heat sinks and strange devices, devices like inverted void shield generators, studded its surface along with slab sided power housings emitting turquoise light from a lattice, lattice of grizzles. Bulkheads run through it like cartilage and at each Intersection was a vast portal of hyperdense alloys, sealing off section after section of the umbilical. They resemble the doors to vast treasure vaults or the hatches of, of obelets holding dangerous guests. Ubilets. Yeah, whatever. Trigian Jordis vine like mechaden, mechaden trees were integrated like dunals into the umbilical's controls. Through them, Jordi sensed the other tech priest's distraction and sent an irritable burst of calibration into Dunwall's 
hemisphere of operation. They force her to swiftly and unnecessarily recalculate several parameters. A tenfold logicus, the triking snapped. This is not an orbital transfer shaft. You must work in absolute synchrony to ensure the end trees to each of the umbilical machine spirit are received with grace. <clears throat> Apologies, Tarkin. Full cognition is restored. Is the Mago cer certain that this level of protection is necessary? The level is fully secure, surely. Do not question the Magos. Certainly, Logicus. Somehow, Tricking Jordan managed to load Dunwall's signify with disdain through his Subtle use of Metallica's high echelon cant and careful position of his subordinate mecha dendrils. The weapon is secure. The Magos' research, however, revealed the addition that additional cautions must be taken. The exact efficiency of the weapon is unknown. Jordan made a distasteful gesture at having to use the world, the word. It is part of our sacred duty to present the Magos with the full assessment of its capabilities as well as recovering the artifacts itself. Additional this station is of the Red Planet. We cannot assume the, compli the compliance of its machine spirit. This is an inordinate honor. The successful operation of the reclamation feat is dependent on my, on our, holy endeavors. Huh. Going on. The umbilical crossed the final stretch of silent space, its surface dusted with icy fragments. Even on the bridge of the ya Yambic Romulan, Duno detected the heavy mechanical reverberations as its claw-like clamps locked into position on the station's airlock. A big thief showed her the ranks of waiting for servitors. My god, every email is going up right now. What the fuck? Big Thief showed her the ranks of waiting servitors at its entrance way with the movement. It was an inestimable tri tribute of Metallica to Grand Reclamation Feat M4 Huai Omega, one of its precious arcane mechanicum, an, an ecumenical gesture of unity between those who would vie for power during the long voyage into the dark. Duno could not fully explain to herself why the Magos had dispatched Jordeth and herself here, and none other. There were adepts in far higher favor with the Magos than even Jordeth believed himself to be. With deft impulses, Duna ordered the dozen, dozens of servitors, logojacks, and mechanotrolls through the umbilical, and passed each slowly hinging or irising portal led by a humming servo skull that had once been a high-ranking Lex mechanic. Dunal knew Jordan did not know what the Magos had learned. The Triking would have artlessly boasted of such confidence. All they had been given was this location millions of miles from Metallica, and a hexaclavus signal key that the Magos claimed would be needed to secure the weapon. The only information the two tech priests had been able to glean had come through Nemo echoes that resounded through Metallica's invisible data fields. The weapon had been wielded in millennia past by the Forge Lords of Metallica, aiding them in the quest for knowledge by wiping out mutants, Xenos, and engines corrupted by the Materialium. It was said to have saved and purified the Forge Worlds of Toromest, Fardel, Majoris, and, Ste and Stele Lex. Yet none knew where these planets had lain, or if their forges still survived. After an unknown crisis, the weapon had been hidden, supposedly at Mars' tyrannical insistence. Until the Magos' discovery, not even the Fabricator General of Metallica had known that it was here, at the very edge of the Forge World system. Only the weapon's name remained certain. Radiant Wrath. After an elongated exchange between Yambic Romulan's cogitator engine and the controls of the docking pier, Duno and Georgia's servitors gained entry. The tech priests watched avidly through the manifold senses of their proxies. The Magos has insisted that neither of them were to board the Phylacor Terminus in person, thus they were forced to experience its holy aura vigorously 
through the limited senses of their cyborg trolls. Ancient lumen stripes flickered. Ofcan scans registered ozone and unusual hydrocarbon scents. Shimmering curtains of data flap like seaweed in currents of pulsing energy, passed through by the unheeding servitors as though they were mist or hung like tapestry over the laser and attached representation of the Opus Machina. Despite Binharic entries, there was no direct response from the station's controlling logic engine. Really? Okay. Merely automated blurts from outlying systems, and nor did there appear to be any physical crew. The servitors lumbered, hovered, and wove their way along an interminable corridor through the station's deserted interior. Sprays of sanctified incense and blurst of binharic prayers haunted their steps as they moved in procession. The relative position echoed Metallica's varied radium frequencies. The servitors passed sealed chambers bearing warnings and dialect, dialects of lingua technis that had not been broadcast in millennia, and black passages down which the thin atmosphere trickled trickled as if pulled by some void beyond. With the final turn of the corridor, Dunal suddenly commanded the servitors to halt as her flesh voice gasped and even Jorath loosed an involuntary binharic in percussion. The passage was terminated suddenly, the space beyond the vast ch chasm. There were lights here, but they failed to fill the enormous space and glitter like weak stars. A smudge of grey was invisible, was visible in the distance, where the servitor's cranial lumen blazed dead ahead. There was still no response to the yambic Romulan's repeated hails, yet the servitor's presence had disturbed something. Some of the distant stars in that immense space were moving. With a suddenness that made the tech priest jump, light flare like a dozen miniature suns, the void was lit. It was sphere spherical, and at its center, on anti-gravity impulsor, hung a low, a lead-colored cube some thirty feet across. The inside of the sphere was encrusted with thousands of heavy bore weapons on gimbal turrets, and the stars the tech priests had glimpsed were their targeting reticles. Twenty or so of the nearest had sunk, swung to face the servitors. Hoppers churned and ammo fed spuns, while plasma cells trumped at high power. All the others remained resolutely fixed on the leaden cube. Attend, I am detecting intrusion, Jordi blurred his four mechanical manipulators and three mecha tendrites flashing between ship controls. Omnesiah, the data stack something has breached our firewalls. It's ravenous, I, I have no control. What is it? Are we under attack? Donal asked, seeing the same invasion, invasive aggression displayed in flickering columns of data. Jordan slowly looked back up at the Oculus array, showing the weapon system targeting yet not firing upon the servitors, and his silvered irises narrowed in understanding. It is the station, the Phylacore Terminus. We have awoken its central machine spirit. By the auric ratio, I have never witnessed such power, such finesse. It will kill us! Dino hastily disconnected each of her tentacular mechadendrites from Romulan's system. It could easily have done that already, Logicus. It is interrogating our logic core. It will find the Magos Hexaclavus file. Do not make any transmission. The Magos signal key will suffice, said Jordan though his cant was stinged with wavering variables. After several macroseconds, a series of runic indicators flashed. The dull grey cube in the sphere's center moved slowly towards the tunnel's entrance, where the remaining servitors were still pinned under the glare of the nearest turrets. Every other visible weapon system followed the cube's movement with mechanical precision. As it neared, the tech priest saw its almost featureless flanks contain a single viewing portal and the passive arrays, arrays hidden within the form, former 
Lex Mechanics co detected the unmistakable chronometric waveforms of Statis technology. The cube docked with the passage, with yeah, with the passage with a clank of metal. Is it safe? Can we? Dunn's voice trailed off. Jordis manipulators dance over ruining controls, and his grill emitted granting benedictions. The servitors responded and approached the unreflective cube. The servo skull hovering to point its multi point its multiple optics and sensor veins, veins through the viewing portal. The tech priest watched, wrapped as the detector slowly swept the interior. Stasis vaults lined the, lined the cube's walls, filled not with the esoteric techno arcana they were expecting, but with factorum produced items of quotidian quality, disconnected bionic limbs and loops of dusty data tethers. There was a weapon rack in one stasis vault, but the radium carabin inside was scuffled and smoke stained. Duo could not understand this carabin was not a purifying weapon that would ensure the reclamation's feet, fleet success. The Magos had been deceived. The several skull optics peered into the final corner where a large stasis sarcophagus sat. Winking indicators showed its systems had entered revivification. Most of them, most of the arm glass was frosted and grazed with some disorienting patina, but the pale robes of Metallica were visible inside the gunmetal bionics of known forged temples and armor plates dueled with grime. The stasis and vaults countdown completed and the distinctive helmet of Skitarius Vanguard lifted slowly to face the portal. The Yambic Romulan sat above Corifex's equatorial belt where the forged old major temples were still burned in psychic conflagration. <coughs> wow, this is a long one. The reminder of the Magos' reclamation feat remained on the other side of the system, leaving the forge Barak to approach alone. The Romulan was not a warship, yet none of the fleet sought to closely guard its exposed flanks. The Magos' indentured astropaths detected the final frantic crisis of their kin upon Scorifex. The fleet's psychic messengers shrieked tearfully of predatory sentiences drawn from the warped nightmares of blood and oil brought forth by witch breeds in the forge world slave population. The Skitarius from Phylacor Terminus occupied a specific constructed dropship in one of the Romulan's rear launch bays, as far from the bridge as possible. Autonomic signifiers identified the warrior as Skitarius Luminor 000011, though few referred to it as anything other than Radiant Wrath. It seemed incapable of transmitting intelligibly, and every attempt to analyze its admitters resulted in the loss of yet another servitor. The Romulan had lost more than 50 during the transit from Metallica, in addition to all of those that had set foot on the station. The Magos has not been deceived after all, thought Dunal as she looked at the blackened puckering of, the f of her flesh around implants that flanked with crumbling oxides. The purifying weapon was simply one that walked and talked. The excoriating emissions from the silent soldier were unprecedented. They bled into everything a gale of zit. A gale of zeta particles blowing in a torrent from every part of its body. Servitors in the same section of the hole swiftly lost their biological components, their waxy skin blackening and slowing away in a matter of minutes. Metallica compounds scorched, crack cracking and crumbling. How the warrior's own components survived such a barrage was not something that could be determined, not on, not on the forge bark, Jordan and Dunal had desperately marched the remaining servitors in work roads yeah, and work rotas through the tempestuous journey in the warp, barely keeping the ship running as the Skitarius radiation leached into the ship's superstructure. Twice they received emergency supplies from the rest of the fleet via a disposable shuttle. No other ship designated Vagnid. What the? No other ship. Dinged? 
to get close. Dared, I'm just gonna say another ship dared to get close. Though Jordan and Donald kept themselves as far away as they could. They have been forced to replace many of their flesh and bionic components repeatedly. The Magos promised that the old that ultra deionization protocols would be enacted once Radiant Wrath was away from the ship. Assur assuring, assuring the two tech priests that replacement augmentations were more than sufficient for now. Donald wasn't sure. The Logicals watched the dropship containing Radiant Rat hit Scott Effects atmosphere through the single bionic eye Jordan had allowed her from the last shipment. The Trickin having requested the choice, choicest replacements. Her thoughts were disorganized. Delicate neural threading had provided replacement meat for her brain where it had withered, but it was as if calculation had somehow become sluggish as well. It will be worth it, Trickin, she told the tech priest behind her. Scar effects will be tainted for hundreds of millennia, but it will be pure and purge, a testament to the glory of Metallica and the Machine God. Jordeth had not been able to respond for days. The physical manifestation of the Skitarius furious aura were not, were not where it, its effects ended. Streams of tumorous logo scripts had multiplied in Jordan's nososphere, parameters expanding and twisting in the Trickin's neural architectural fact disorting. <clears throat> fact disorting. Dis distorting, yeah. Knowledge. The gilded jewel held in awe by every tech priest, bloated with a kind of replicating and mutating viral curse, one that Duno could see swelling in her own cogitators. Logicus Dunno had hidden her had hidden her in fear her fear and regular updates to the Magus. She suppressed an unpleasant and pleasantly emotional burst of fear. She was part of something wondrous and divine. Every great endeavor had its martyrs. Okay. I've read for like twenty three twenty two minutes. And I'm gonna be honest, the orc one was awesome. The orc one was good. I like, yeah, I like orcs. Makes sense. This story makes no fucking sense whatsoever. So I guess it had, this was something about either Necrons or the obliterator virus that turns men into machine and monstrosities. Let's just end. Let's just say it's just some dark, dark age of technology bullshit that will be used to, you know, Later on, Psychic Awakening.